What's going on, guys? Welcome to part one of our Dominaria set review. Uh, I did one of these for Rivals of Ixalan, and uh, it was pretty fun. I like This is a good way for me to also get a look at the cards that have come out, because I actually haven't seen that many of the spoilers. I kind of like wait until I can see them all so I can process everything at once, and uh, this is a great way for, for everyone to do that together. So uh, if you guys are watching on Twitch, if you guys are watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Hope you enjoy. And uh, we're going to go over the white cards, and uh, be sure to... Follow or subscribe if you want to see the rest of the, the remaining parts, which will also... All parts will be going up at 9 p.m. on uh, each day up until the pre-release. So uh, if you guys are looking for those, if you guys are interested to see my thoughts on each each color and each section of the of Dominaria, be sure to you know check back and uh, see it, I guess. All right, so we've got Adamant Will. Two mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains indestructible until end of turn. This is a nice play on, like, God's Willing, or, um... So is there one like that gives Indestructible? Like, the one that's very similar to this? I mean, this is a fine card. Usually, I think one mana is where you want to be. This is probably limited only. I don't foresee any decks playing this card, but... You never know. Ah, oh, even Sentry. Three and a white for a 3-2 flyer. Literally... Literally snapping Drake. All right. Never gonna see play. Two, two, four, legendary creature, Baird, Steward of Argive. Argive? Argive? I don't know. Arg I'm going to go with Argive. Uh, four mana, two white, white, uh, Vigilance. It's uncommon, surprisingly. There's a lot of uncommon legendary cards in this set, which surprised me personally, but um, not unprecedented. Vigilance, creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. Wow, it's like a... That's like a ghostly prison. That's like half a ghostly prison or a magus of the moat. I think. Magus of the tabernacle. Kind of. Anyway, this is a this is a pretty common effect. The uh, You're taxing the creatures so that they can't attack unless they pay the tax. So that's pretty interesting. Someone... <laughs> Baird might have implications for mono-white taxes, I think. Okay, well, there you go. And, uh... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll consider that validating. Um, I'm not sure... To f I mean, one mana per creature is actually pretty sizable. Like, that's not bad. I don't know if this guy's going to see playing in standard, but maybe? I don't know where you'd, where you'd put him is the thing. Like, he's not going to go to control deck because this just isn't a, a control creature. And you don't want to wrath your own guys away. It's not going to go in, like, a mid-range deck, I don't think. I don't know. Hard to say. Banalish Honor Guard. 2-2 two, two for 2. Banalish Honor Guard plus, gets plus 1 plus 0 oh for each legendary creature you control. This has the potential to be like a 3 or a 4-2 in limited, I would imagine, uh, pretty regularly. Uh, it is each legendary creature you control, not like each saga or each historic card, so not going to get too big, but yeah, I can see this being like a, even a 5-3 in certain situations. It, it's fine. Not going to be playing it in Constructed, though. Banalish Marshall, white, white, white for a three-three. You can tell that's a uh, that's definitely a, a rare casting cost there. Uh, we have a three-three. Other cre other creatures you control get plus one plus one. This card is actually great. I mean, if you're playing mono white, you could just play this guy for for days. Like three-three for three, sure. The other, you know, the rest of it's gravy. There's also a couple. There, I think this is a cycle, so we'll see. Blessed Light, five mana each. Exile target creature or enchantment. I like the versatility of this in limited. I think this is a, an excellent piece of limited removal, but we're not gonna we're not gonna be playing this in constructed. Board the weatherlight. It's like the train, like the conductor. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a historic card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is peer through depths only for historic cards instead of instants and sorceries. So we have. Historic cards are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So, for two mana, you have to find an artifact, a legendary, or a saga. This is basically like one mana more for an ancient stirrings, right? Like this is a this is a pretty, pretty well seen, pretty common uh, design where you look at the top five, put a put a specific card of that type into your hand, and uh, could see play. I mean, ancient stirrings cost one, peer through depths cost was an instant, right? So. Both of those had advantages on board the Weatherlight. The, you know, this is a two-mana sorcery, which is obviously worse. But, I don't know. It depends on how good, like, the the historic, the, uh, the historic cards in your deck are, right? But, 
I don't know if this needed to be two mana. One, I mean, maybe they know that one mana is too strong for this kind of effect. Maybe playing this on turn one and just finding a two or a three drop is really good. I don't know. Call the Cavalry. Four mana. Create two, two, two white knight creatures tokens with vigilance. I feel like we've done this before. Have we? I'm going to find out. Allied reinforcements put two, two, two white knight allied token creatures onto the battlefield. Those were allies. Um, but also Night Watch put two, two, two white knight tokens with vigilance onto the battlefield. So this is actually a discount from Night Watch from Return to Ravnica. But it is one. It is the same mana as allied reinforcements from, from Battle for Zendikar. So, you know. I don't know if that's going to... Like, I still don't think it's going to see play. Like, I'm not going to... You're just going to... C compare this with like Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Not legal and standard anymore, but that should give you an idea of like what you're looking for in a four mana planeswalk in a four mana card that makes creatures, right? This is I don't think this is where you want to be. Fine and limited though. Four power for four mana. Creatures you can control plus one plus one until end of turn. Good for them. Good for them. Dovenant Dovenant Trapper. Dovenant Dovenant Trapper. Uh, three mana for a three two. Whenever you cast a historic spell, tap target creature and opponent controls. Mm. I mean, you'll play it in limited. It's a three two for three. It's 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 fine stats, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, this you're not playing this in constructed. Let's be real. Denitha Capuchin Paragon. First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink. That's amazing for a 2 2 for 3. Great card. Or an equipment spell as you cast costs one less to cast. So, very good for any kind of like heroic archetypes where you want to just target your guys with enchantments or auras or whatever. Um, but, I mean, eh, this, this creature's just fine all around. Like, I'm okay with playing this. I'm not sure what enchantments are going to be left. There was a uh, there was like a blue white auras deck in standard that was seeing play for a while. I'm not sure if anything cycles out with uh, Dominaria. If you guys know, let us know. But um, yeah, card seems good. I mean, I'll play it by itself. Even if you don't have even if you don't have like the uh, any sort of enchantment theme in your deck, like it's just literally a two two with first strike vigilance and life link. Um, the problem with playing this in modern boggles is that most of the cards in boggles aren't that expensive anyway, like Rancor, Ethereal Armor, Hyena Umbra, Spider Umbra, they all cost one anyway. Like, there's only maybe two or three, if that, that really cost more than one. And this really just turns on a target. Like, it turns on, it turns on all your opponent's removal, basically, that, that otherwise doesn't have a target, rather. Nothing cycles, good to know. I don't, it's, I've stopped keeping track of what does or doesn't cycle in standard. So, uh... You know, daring archaeologist three three for four rare. When daring archaeologist archaeologist enters the battlefield, you return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, that's archaeological for magic. Whenever you cast a historic spell, which could be the artifact you return, will be put a one one counter on daring archaeologist. So, not bad. Uh, obviously, they're harkening back to like our given archaeologist, which was. Let's find it. I can't find it yet. Argivian Archaeologist. Okay, so yeah, it's a 1-1 one, one for 3 to have to bring an artifact back from your graveyard to your hand. There's a bunch of Archaeologist cards, though, that, that bring things back, so... Apparently, there's more than I thought. Hey, yo. But, I mean, I don't know. This card, 4 mana, you're not really... There was a restoration card called Restoration Gearsmith from um, uh, Kaladesh. I think it was also four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. And I think you could return a, an enchantment, uh, an artifact or a creature to your hand, I believe. I'm having to cross-reference these cards with other things. Restoration, uh, artifact, or creature, yeah. So, I mean, like, that's arguably better than this guy because you, you're, you're actually returning one of... Like... Being able to return, return a creature to your hand instead of just an artifact is significantly better. Uh, and I think that outweighs whenever you cast a historic spell, put a counter on this guy. Unless you have uh, a deck that has a, an extremely high concentration of historic cards. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If Restoration Gearsmith isn't seeing any play, I don't know if this will. But, 
I don't know. Dauntless Bodyguard, one mana for a 2-1, which is just the, the standard nowadays. Uh, as Dauntless Bodyguard enters the battlefield, choose any other another creature you control. The chosen creature gets indestructible to the end of turn. That's actually very good. This creature is insane. Late game, you can just name Baneslayer Angel and you get a 2-1 for one. That's pretty good. Just protect whoever you want. I don't even think this is like the the fact that this this ability doesn't isn't even restricted to uh to like aggressive decks. Like you can play this in like a mid range deck just to protect your later threats. Like it's not it's great on turn one and it's great on turn like six, which is really nice. Dub. Three mana for a two two. It gets plus two plus two and has first strike and is a knight in addition to its other type. So it, it basically you're basically knighting knighting something, which is it's just fine. Not in standard, but you know, it's fine. Evra, Halcyon, Halcyon Witness. Six mana for a 4-4 four, four rare uh, lifelink. Exchange your life total with Evra, Halcyon Witness's power. That's really interesting. So... <laughs> One thing you could do is like switch the power and toughness, go to four life or switch your life total with theirs. You go to four, this becomes a 20 slash four and then you attack with it and then you gain 20. So you're actually gaining only like four in that situation. But I mean, you still have a 24. This is presuming like your, you know, full life total, what have you, but this is a crazy ability. Fling is in standard. You can actually switch your life total for like... So you can just play this on turn... Like, let's say you ramp into it. You play it on turn five. And on turn six, you can just switch life total fling. That's a thing. Wow, fling was an almond cat. That's crazy. I can't, I, I can't wait to watch people just get, get wrecked by uh, Halcyon Witness. Switch my life total fling. And plus, like, the thing is you're getting your life back. Because... Oh, no, you're not, because Fling deals the damage. If Fling says Fling deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target creature. So thankfully, Everett does not deal the damage. Fling deals the damage if you Fling something. So, yeah, that's pretty insane. I don't know, like, I don't know if this card is good, right? But this card is crazy cool. If ex Excavation Elephant, 5 mana for a 3-5 with Kicker 2. So for 7 mana... If it was kicked, return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is just the rare art. This is just the rare, the rare archaeologist we just saw, only for seven mana instead. So two cards with this ability. Um, if that archaeologist said return a um, a historic card from your graveyard to your hand, I would be on board with that because then you're then you're returning legendaries, you're returning artifacts, and you're returning sagas, which is significantly better than just returning only artifacts. Fall of Thran. So this is the first saga we've seen. Not not personally, but like the first saga in the review anyway. Six mana for a rare. Okay. So as the saga enters and enter, after your draw step, add a lore counter. Sacrifice after step three. So turn one, when you first play this, you destroy all lands. For six mana. That's interesting. Next turn during your upkeep. Or after your draw step, rather. So you draw a card. Each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield, so you get two lands. Next card, next turn, you draw your card, you get two more lands. So this basically destroys all lands. So in a, against the control deck on turn like ten, you can destroy all the lands, and then you both get four lands back. And that's pretty much it. And if you're able to rob a control deck of six lands in the late game, it's actually very very good. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a control deck like that in standard that take that that needs that kind of mana, like the pearl like ancient control decks back of your but um i don't know this card's interesting man it's a six mana armageddon where you get four lands back after and has like suspend two on it right oh gideon's approach this is probably the third time gideon's approaches are printed been printed in like the past seven sets eight sets nine sets gideon's approach two mana deal four damage to an attacking or blocking creature sure limited Healing Grace, one mana. Prevent the next three damage. That would be dealt to any target by this turn, by a source of your choice. You gain three life. It's literally just Healing Solve that does both abilities. You prevent the damage and you gain the life. So, 
History of, B History of Benalia is an interesting card, and I wasn't sure why it was mythic. I'm still not really sure why it's mythic. But three mana comes into play, makes a 2-2 night creature. Next turn, makes a 2-2 night creature. Next turn, knights you control get plus two, plus one. Then it's it. So this is basically like two, two, two twos, and then all your twos get plus two, plus one. I mean, you can play other knights, right? I mean, for the rate, like for three mana, getting two, two, two knights is, is great. I agree with that. I also agree that like if you have a bunch of guys making two more and then giving all your knights plus two, plus one, that's also great. It just doesn't feel mythic. So, um, I don't know. I'm, it surprises me that it's mythic. Invoke the Divine. Three mana, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Or an ar yeah, gain four life. This card's great. This is exactly what I want in a uh, in, a, in an upgraded disenchant. It's, a, it's an instant, not a sorcery. You destroy the artifact or an enchantment, not one or the other. Not like destroy an artifact, gain next life. Destroy an enchantment, gain it. You, get, you get your choice. And you gain a good amount of life. Four life is great. And the cost isn't... Uh, the cost is, is only three. It's not four, so... How's my title slightly misleading? Knight of Grace, two mana, first strike. Hex. I love the. I like these knights a lot. Uh, three, uh, two, two for two with first strike. Great. Hexproof from black. Great. Um, keep in mind that they can still block with their two, three black creature and kill this. And it gets plus one, plus zero oh, as long as any player controls black permanent. No, they can't. It would have to be a two, four because of first strike. It says cube. Tra oh, I tried to update it. Oh man, I'm so. It still says error. Cannot update the stream. This is really weird. Yeah, I tried to do it earlier. I tried to fix it, and it wouldn't let me, so my bad. Could not update stream information. That's really annoying. That is extremely tilting. Anyway, this card's great. Uh, glad to have it in the set. I like the knights. Except for Knight of New Benalia, which is just a Raptor, which was both... So this this card, this 3-1 for 2 mana, it was in Ixalan as the Raptor. It was in Rivals of Ixalan as the Raptor. Now it's in now it's in Dominaria as the Knight of New Benalia. Sure. This is the third set in a row that a 3-1 for one, one white and one colorless has been in, so... Cool. Quende, Pride of Femoref. Four mana for a 2-2 with double strike. Creatures you control with first strike have double strike. He just gives you a second strike. Here you go, man. How you doing? Have a... Uh... What's hex price? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, you're probably not going to play this guy for four mana. But, boy, this is pretty good at... Uh... Limited. Lyra Dawnbringer. This is a card right here, boys. Uh, remember Baneslayer Angel? This is literally just Baneslayer Angel 2.0. No protection from demons or dragons, which is fine, because other angels you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. That's pretty big. That's big game. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's five, literally 5-5 five, five for 5 with flying first strike lifelink. This card is amazing. Can't, uh, can't really argue with this. I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the more expensive cards in the set. I don't know, though. Mesa Unicorn. 2-2 two, two for 2 with lifelink. This is also an Ixalan as uh, Bishop, the, the Bishop guy. I don't know. Again, not really exciting. Like, you'll play it unlimited, 100%. On Sarah's Wings. 4 mana. Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature is legendary. Gets plus 1, plus 1, and has flying. Vigilance and lifelink. That is a lot of things, actually. This is actually pretty good. Um... I mean, it doesn't give you hexproof, right? So that's pretty sad. Um, yeah, so you're still like susceptible for the two for one. It's interesting that this gives legendary. Like all of a sudden, you just become legendary because why? Explain it to me. Because Sarah gave her Sarah gave you her wings, but she wasn't even legend. Oh, uh, Sarah Angel actually. Maybe Sarah herself would be legendary. Yeah, all right, fine. I'll buy it. 
Three mana for a Pegasus Courser, one three flyer. Whenever it attacks another target creature, gains flying this turn. This card's great uh, in limited. You're 100% going to take this and play it because it's really good. Hunter is a pointer Greyhound mix. And um, someone asked in the chat. Um, yeah, giving, it, giving it any other creature you control flying is just huge. Sanctum Spirit, four mana. How come all these uncommons are four mana? Four mana for a three two. Lifelink. This card has third card. It gets indestructible to the turn. That's actually pretty good. You'll play this in limited too. Again, not constructible, but probably very, very good in limited. Oh, it looked like ah, oh, I thought it would. I thought it had flying. That's weird. I thought it was a floater. Apparently not though. That's weird. Um, less good, obviously, but. 3-2 lifelink indestructible is really hard to deal with, but you do have to be discarding your historic cards, so which are usually going to be pretty good, right? Can the wings be used as a removal sometimes? Um, that's a good question. So, if your opponent has two of them, yes, but the problem with that is they would just keep the one that that you put the wings on, right? So, like, if they have two six sixes, if they have two colossal dread maws, um, you're getting rid of a colossal dread maw. But the one you're the one you're not getting rid of is now a seven seven flying vigilant lifelinker, right? So, I mean, it, it is an answer though. If you have two colossal dread maws facing you down and you need to get rid of one, do what you got to do, right? But it is it is versatile, right? Like that's still that's still a use. Seal Away is probably one of the best removal cards I have seen in a long time. Two mana for basically a journey into journey to nowhere. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile a tapped exile target tapped creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So I mean, this is great. Obviously, it's a tapped creature, not an untapped creature. But the fact that it has flash means they can attack with their guy. You just exile it. Sweet, perfect. Uh, 100% constructed playable, and uh, you will be facing a lot of seal aways in the near future. 2 3 for 3, sure. If it was kicked, create 2 1 1 soldiers. So it's either a 2 3 for 3 or a 2 3 and 2 1 1s for 6. That's fine. I like I love kicker because it's scalable, right? Um, like this is good on turn 3. It's also fine on turn 6, so you have multiple different things to do with it in limited. Awesome. Sarah Angel. We've been here before. You guys know about Sire Angel. Ain't super exciting, but she's awesome. Is what it is. Gonna kill a lot of people in limited games. And uh, that's that. Sarah Disciple. Two mana for a 1-1 one, one flying first strike. When you cast a historic spell, it gets plus one, plus one. So this is just a 2-2 two, two flyer attacking when you, when you cast a historic spell. So it's fine. I mean, depending on how many historic cards are in your limited deck, you may or may not play this card. Uh, I don't think a 1-1 one, one flying first striker is super impressive, but, I mean, if you have enough historic cards to trigger this, like, every, regular turns, um, if a player controls two more legendary permanents with the same name, that player chooses one of them, and the rest are put in... That is interesting. So if one of them is a legend and one of them isn't a legend, I wonder if you still have to... Because you only have one legendary Colossal Dread Maw. That's interesting. It might actually not work that way. Good call, Chris. Shalai, Voice of Plenty. This card's also pretty good. 3-4 four for 4. For an angel flying, you, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control for 6 mana. So for 6 mana, you basically have what Gavany Township does for you for 5 mana. Um, but then you also have kind of like a uh, like an ivory mask type effect where you planeswalkers and other creatures have hexproof. So um, three four for four is pretty much your standard rate for angels. You got restoration angel. You have um, the original Invala cards like that. So I mean, this is pretty much where I expect an angel's power and toughness to be for an ability like this. Nothing too surprising, but I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, card saw play in mid range green white decks. Tasha and Ancestor's Apostle. 2-2 two, two for 4. It's a bird cleric with flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Cards like this... So this rate is terrible. 2-2 two, two flyer for 4 is not great, right? But this ability is always interesting. It's always something I want to look at when you just return a guy for free just for casting something. Iron Chef Sammy, 26 months in a row. Thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. You are awesome, buddy. 
Um, yeah, so I mean, this is just a good deal. Like, if you if you're able to get one guy back with this, it becomes a very good deal. If you're not, it's a very bad deal. It's really weird how there's like that. There's no real gray area there. Um, I mean, I think you play this 100% of the time in limited. Doubt it will find a home in constructed because there's so many things you want to be playing for four mana instead of Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle. If it had Flash, I could see that. Tragic Poet, one mana for one one. Sacrifice Tragic Poet, return an enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Not terrible. I mean, the good thing about this card, keep in mind, is that Sagas are all enchantments. So being able to get a Saga back, which has usually three different effects on it, is pretty good. You know, this also seems like it's a Dominaria. It's Dominaria, so we're going to be a very enchantment-heavy set. So I could see this making the making play in your limited deck for as your 22nd 23rd card i think it's completely reasonable and i think that's also why they have it as a tap ability and not a mana ability because you know it does have to survive so triumph of gerard so we have two mana for another saga this one's uncommon the first two abilities so when it comes into play and the very next turn you put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control with the greatest power so it's, it's kind of like a reverse um bestow is bestow is that what it's called the one that anafenza has i'm looking it up bolster it's, it's like a reverse bolster where instead of the highest toughness creature you put it on the or the instead of the i put it on the creature with the lowest toughness you put it on the creature with the greatest power so um that's a thing and uh, then the last one, target creature control with the greatest power against flying first strike and lifeling until end of turn. So you get like a one shot. This is basically just like one combat trick spread out over three turns, right? Like this is like give a creature plus two, plus two and flying first strike and lifeling until end of turn. Like that's literally what you're looking at for two mana, but it's just spread out over three different turns. So it's a little more strategic. So you can put it on one, two different creatures. You can give a different creature the flying first strike and lifelink. Or they can wipe your board, and then this third part resolves, and you never get anything. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. This card's... I, I agree with you. I don't like making my best creatures even better. Like, this is literally the, uh, the, the epitome of putting all your eggs in one basket. But, um, I don't know. You still might play it unlimited. I, I would even be reluctant, because I'd be like, all right, I'll play my Triumph of Gerard, and they're like, all right, I'll kill all your creatures. All right, well, that's rough. Like, you have to have at least two guys out to feel safe when you play this, I think. I don't know. Urza's Ruinous Blast. This card is pretty ridiculous. Uh, you may cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. So, um, it's pretty interesting. Exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary, which is a nice, that's a nice little, uh, there's a lot, there's a lack of tension on this card, which is nice. So, like, if you control a legendary creature or a, or a planeswalker, um, those will not get exiled. So it requires you to have something, but the thing it requires you to have is just fine. And five mana for this effect is a, l a good deal. Like, it's a good deal. So, um, yeah, this card should see play. I, can, I would be surprised if this card didn't see play. I can't imagine the legendary permanents uh, are going to take over the format in such a way that, like, this doesn't see play. My only problem is that it doesn't get rid of opposing planeswalkers, but... It's life. I mean, you can't have it all. Like, they always have to have variations of this card. Like, you have Planar Cleansing, you have Chroma's Vengeance. There's tons of cards like this, and you just have to pick which one works best for you. Unless you're in Standard, and then you just have to pick the one that you have. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. This was the white portion of the Dominaria set review. Be sure, to, be sure to check out all the other portions on YouTube. They're going up all this week at 9 p.m. Eastern at franklapore.com slash YouTube, or YouTube, YouTube.com slash franklapore. Uh, slam those like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you for the blue portion.